Thanks. I'm, I'm apologise for this rather <coughs> savage time restriction. You did you did brilliantly well, and um, Mr. Parasaraman from the Tata Institute will do just as well. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. The the slowing down of um, urban growth, I, I think it, it is happening um, uh, as a paradox in the sense that uh, the crisis in agriculture and the displacement of people from lands and livelihoods, uh, both due to industries and due to SEZ, I think is creating a condition of, of a greater push out of villages. I think that's, that's, that we can see uh, across the country. Now, still it doesn't translate into um, people moving on to the urban areas, and that is also in a context of um, you know, jobless uh, growth. Um, you, you have a context of jobless growth along with um, the displacement of people from uh, urban areas. I think um, Professor Sesson talked about the informalization and, 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 and the critical problems associated with this. I think you have a situation at this particular point in time, the rural push is happening along with the time the urban push out of um, the urban areas. There is, a, there, there, there is that contradiction that one sees um, there. Um, Professor Sestan also talked about the, the informalization is low cost. It is largely enacted on the backs of more vulnerable workers and the households, I think, in, in, in urban context as such. I think one of the, um, one of the most um, important um, aspect which you see in urban context is um, the lack of compassion. The lack of compassion within the society for people who are disempowered and, and poor. I think um, the desire to make poor invisible um, is, 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 is part of this particular process whereby the uh, informalization of labor along with um, 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 you know, displacement. You want the poor people to work in the urban areas, but you don't want them um, to be living closer to you, to, 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 be, to be part of your system. I think this is a greater uh, problem um, in it. The time of the logic of globalization, the economic globalization per se, that has begun to structure all aspects of human life. Um, it, you can see it in every aspect of uh, urban life uh, as such, whether it is in terms of um, access to health care, whether in terms of access to affordable housing in, 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 in urban areas. I think this is where the greatest problem um, you find. One talked about the statistics relating to poverty. It's possible to earn $2 per day, but then the, the cost of health care is so great in a context where there is deteriorating um, um, uh, urban environment for poor people to live in. You might earn $2, but the cost of health care, the cost of education, the cost of water for poor people is so great that it doesn't really make um, um, a greater sense. I think the difference between um, above poverty line and and you know, the depth you can hit um, is so great in this country, and, and particularly in, in, in urban areas as such. The retreat of the state. I think it is, a, it is a very important phenomenon, both in our rural areas and in urban areas. Um, we need to look at um, what's happening to, um, uh, to, to, to slum context in Mumbai, slum context in uh, other parts of the country, that, um, that there is there is a gradual withdrawal of the state in many aspects of life of the poor people. And, um, and, I, and, and poor people depend more on state. I think um, the, 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 the protection of their rights to health care, rights to education, um, uh, and, and, and securing freedoms can, can result mostly from the state uh, support. But I think um, it is in poor people's life in urban areas that the state has retreated to a greater extent. And that's an that's a enormously worrying point um, in, in our context. Um, I, I think these are, these are some of the uh, critical points that came up. I can, I, there are many other issues which people will be bringing up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Pasraman. <laughs> Could I ask Lindy Bremner to, uh, from Temple University? Thank you. Um, I'm going to respond to just one point that Saskia made with a few brief remarks, um, and that is the point about how globalization is wired 
into urban spaces um, in ways that are quite specific to those spaces and their history. And I'd like to do this by looking for a moment at the economic histories of two places, one I'm very familiar with, Johannesburg, and one I'm not very familiar with, Mumbai. Um, Johannesburg's economy was a mining economy requiring vast reserves of capital and labor to entice the earth to spit out its wealth. These conditions have produced a centralized, quantifiable city on top of underground conurbations whose function was to transform people into machines and sap from them their vital entrepreneurial energies. These two characteristic spaces of the modern mechanical metropolis, the vertical shaft and the underground stope, have been increasingly <coughs> disconnected by the entrepreneurial, flexible logics of contemporary urbanization. And because of this, producing a fragmented city of ruins and frontiers. Mumbai's economy, on the other hand, was a textile economy producing a city whose architecture is an aggregation of human bodies, a continuous horizontal network, a flexible fabric. I think it's a kind of biotechnical environment, closer to an agricultural system, linked to seasons, cycles, weather, and the reversibility of crops, more to the paradigm of urban government. This foresaw, I think, the electronic thought of a web-based society where everything is associated and interconnected and explains why this city has leapfrogged over the clunky mechanical modernity for an era of fuzzy logics, mass entrepreneurship, and elastic modernity. And this brings me to what I'd like to say to propose as a characteristic description of Mumbai's performance in global processes, and that's its elasticity, its ability to stretch without tearing, to not break at the seams, to expand and contract, to be pushed and pulled, to stretch around the globe and back again. Um, flying here, I was um, sat with a young man from Mumbai who has worked for years as a ticket salesman at Euston Station in central London. With his earnings, he has bought an apartment in, in Mumbai where his family now live. He visits them twice a year. He only plans to live like this until he decides to look for a wife, as he put it, when he will return to Mumbai to marry and raise a family. I'm sure this is a fairly typical story, but one which talks of the extent to which Mumbai cannot be confused with a single geographic location. I think Mumbai is everywhere. It's a lycra city. It's only Mumbai, insofar as it maintains its capacity to elastically extend and contract between London, Sydney, Toronto, and California. And finally, I'd like to talk about a weak urbanization. As I've listened to discussions about India's urbanization over the last day only, I must confess, what has struck me is how inflexibly the categories of urban and rural, of city and village, are used to think about Mumbai. It seems to me there might be a better way to think about this city, as part of, not separate from, its territory for who can tell where Mumbai begins and ends? Instead, I think a concept of weak urbanization more accurately imagines the situation, one in which an agricultural landscape <coughs> survives in the presence of evolved but no longer totalizing urban infrastructures and services. A city conceptualized as a field, irrigated by urban services, in an innovative mediation, a world no longer codified as urban or rural, city or village, but rather a sum of physical and virtual places that respond to different organizational logics that penetrate and qualify one another. In other words, a concept which I think will allow us to think and plan differently. Thank you. Thank you.